So I can't really afford to carry on with the, the try and look for these bass and mullet. So we, so we put that net away again. It's a lot of work, I know, but he's he's one of the things that we got to have a, a sonar, got to have patience and um, time, and we haven't got any of those. Well, I got patience, but I ain't got the time and the sonar. So we put the net back in the loft, and hopefully, uh, when we get some French French francs, we'll um, go to France and see if we can get this net. Is a friend of mine from Guernsey has uh, got a net lined up um, down Concarno. And next next job, hopefully, will be going across that channel, instead of the Bristol channel, we go across the English channel and uh, see if we can get her. The net is still over there, but I got, um, I paid the money out and I haven't brought the net back because it's a bit too much of a problem getting the net to the ferry and the ferries would leave in awkward times and get a vehicle. Right on, thanks for turning up and taking me home. That's if you are going to take me home, anyhow. <laughs> well, I think it's probably halfway, Mark. <laughs> Country of gold followed me up. They think they're going to catch some fish, I suppose. Ready, Sean? Here she is. Hard work, he's he's a feral net, isn't he? Hard work when there's just two of you. Thanks to George and Woodstock, the, the firm down at Falmouth where they're selling the wood. Thank you very Let's much see. for taking me up there. My pleasure, back. it's been a wonderful day. <laughs> you liar! <laughs> Rachel will think it was wonderful. Yeah. She's oh. had a day of peace and quiet. <laughs> 200 miles longer than we thought. The net is in need of repair before it can be used to catch pilchards. Martin's family do what they can to help. Don't want to do it. Catch all of it now. Grandma usually does it. Oh yes, well good practice for you too, for when you mentioned jeans. <laughs> Cafes around Cornwall are all closed. The visitors are gone home and the tamarind trees are bending over, touching the ground. Good gale here now, southerly gale on the lizard. Most southerly point in England. And not very nice out there. Well, we got the net on the back of the truck. We haven't got it in the boat, but we got it out the barn. It was too wet and windy and awkward to put it in the boat today, but we're going to put it in the boat tomorrow if it isn't too windy and rainy. I come down here now and again to have a little think, have a look at a, not to drive off the cliff, because it's quite easy down here. There's a 200 foot drop down there. But I had to sit here, get rocked about in the truck, in the wind, and have a think about all sorts, like you do, and sometimes have a think about what weather we're going to have through this winter because up to now it's been gales after gales after gales and even today we've got a ship gone ashore down Mosul 
four men picked off by the helicopter, 15 or 13 men, 200 mile off, Spanish, Spanish trawler in trouble. And we've got this steady pattern of gales coming in. I'm a bit worried about it, and Sally's a bit worried about it, obviously, because we haven't got no fat on us. Most most birds and animals, they get plenty of fat on them, don't they, when they're when there's plenty of worms around, plenty of fish, and seals are eating these fish, and they get half inch or four inches of fat all around them. I know Sally keep telling me I'm overweight, but um, this is for me. This fat is for me. I gotta survive. <laughs> I was I was trying to allude to um, financial fat. We haven't got any spare hackers, so I'm a little bit concerned. If I was a, a creature, I would probably starve to death. Because uh, <laughs> I haven't planned ahead. I haven't caught enough in the summer to get by the winter. But there is a little, hopefully, little bit of good luck coming out of this. Somebody the other day told me that you may be able to ask the bank to put us on hold. <laughs> Hibernate. <laughs> put us on hold. <laughs> Put us on hold for 12 months till we get on our feet. You'll be swept off your feet, you go out in this scale, you go over the top of the cliff. Poor weather had prevented Martin from going to sea, so it was fortunate for him that the bank did agree to put his repayments on hold. Now, with calmer conditions, Martin sets out to try the net he brought in France. The last time that Martin fished for pilchers like this, he lost his boat. Tensions are running high. This net is much larger, and Martin knows that once again, he could be near the limit. That one isn't coming in. It's meant to be coming in. I said bring it in. It's going out. It's the other way, isn't it? Oh, you fucking wound up the fucking thing wrong way. Major problem. Concentrate on that. Put it on fast gear and wind up. Here's our first fish, fish Jed. He's a little, a sprattler. And a culture deer. And there's a lot of gold looking, so let's open some more in there. So many different things to do. It's easy when you've got four hands or three hands, but two hands is a bit too much. Probably be as much the mark we shot would probably fill up all these bins or more, but they would have got out through the holes. And as you can see, there's sprats and pilchards.
quite a successful day, although it's very frustrating, wouldn't it? It's well to me. It looked very hard work, like yeah. undermanned, really. Yeah, undermanned, all right. We um, we managed to get in over the side because the main thing was get it over the side and and purse up. But we only just managed to do that because the winch is in the wrong place. I didn't realise that until today. Well, he's been pretty handy looking at the footage of the net going over the side, flying out over and working out where the winch is going to go. And I'd been brought back to reality for when I spoke to my crew member on the telephone to ask him if he could give me a hand. He replied saying, he will if he can, but he got a bit of family commitments. His, his 13 year old son, who's had cancer, as uh, the operation to remove the tumour was unsuccessful. So he got to be moved from Trillist up to Bristol. So on hearing that terrible news, all I could say was I'm terribly sorry to hear about that. And if there's anything I can do, don't hesitate to ask. And don't worry about his job, his job will always be there. So in it, in it's so meaningless sometimes when you're trying to trying to survive catching fish or whatever job you've got. When you've got a serious illness in the family, or if you're gonna have an accident or anything like that, is job, money, and surviving is meaningless when it comes down to your actual life, which is really precious. Did he say yet? He told me he had 200 stones. That's only because I told him. Oh. I don't mind you taking all the credit. I, okay. think, it, I think it's really good that you're spot on. That's our first decent catch old buddy anyway. Yeah. Isn't it? It's done it. How far off was you for them? The boy's, uh, he's getting there really, Jed. No, he's, uh, he gave up there for a while. I don't blame him, really. He's, uh, I would have given up a long time ago myself. He's still very ill, having to go to Bristol. But uh, he'll pull through. He's determined, he's young and determined now, so you no know, fingers crossed. And uh, well, I wish him all the best, really. Yeah, well, you know, he's, a, he's a fighter. And uh, well, I wish you all the best. Yeah, well, I wish you and the boy all the best. Thank you, well, thank you very much, Jed. Thank you. You know, I'd like to see him out here with me one day, actually. Hopefully, one day we'll be sharing the same boat berth. All right, and Jed, well, thank you very much for asking, and uh, I'll see you soon. Well, all day. That was to be the last time that Dave sailed with Martin. Many ships only put to sea around 15 days. The report to the meeting says some fish markets have had no fish to sell. Fuel costs have also hit viability. Ralph Harris, eat your heart out. Tiny kangaroo down spur. Spare, I got spare time because it's easterly wind. Not so easterly wind now, it's easterly wind. And lots of it, gales. It's getting a bit frustrating, so I thought I'd try and unwind a bit and do some painting. That's one of my paintings there of Cadreth in the moonlight. 
It's called Gooseberry Moon, actually. This chap, this chap here is a gooseberry. They two there are kissing and cuddling in the moonlight. And the stars are up in the moon, and it's like night before last when we had a big moon around, a big ring around the moon. One of those nights, it's flat calm. Stars was out, and the shadows from the moon on the beach. Done by memory. <laughs> And another one at Cadworth, this particular pi picture is um, is about five five or six years old because that's the first tractor we had down the cove and I've given it to Sally because I to Sally and I got love you on there. With a drop in the wind and a new crew, expectations of a good catch soon comes to an end when equipment fails. Right. Yeah, the casing was uh, aluminium pulled away, but it's jamming up until we part it. This has been rubbing on the boat now. Probably why we never caught any fish last night. Big in. Hello, John. Martin has applied to MAF for a grant in the hope of raising enough money to purchase a sonar. That's right, this would be far more efficient of finding pilchards. Project for Pesca. So that could well be about £3,000. That would be most helpful and we might be able to get a sonar put in there then. Perseverance finally pays off and on his next trip Martin catches eight tonnes of pilchards. Well, it's eight o'clock we shut the net, and it was three o'clock time we finished getting the fish in the boat, and then, then the hole, the fish made a, made a hole in the net, and they all, all the rest of them escaped, because there was such, ever such a lot more in the net than what I was, what eight ton was. George Rinnicombe is probably the most experienced man in the southwest of England fishing, and he still goes out, and he's, he, he's, he had no spring chicken anymore, but he's still going out there and uh, been ever so helpful. Oh, another thing, just now, um, Jed, Sally, who's just been on the phone and told, told um, Penny, you're in the bank manager, we caught some fish. So she said, I can stay on hold until April and see if we can carry on catching and get on my feet a bit. So the bank manager's happy. That's a good thing, George, isn't it? Yeah, he's he's happy. Happy. If you can keep the bank manager happy, you're all right. Yeah. Don't worry about nobody. And the wife. Yeah. <laughs> Well, she's been happy when I haven't been catching any. He hasn't found credit. <laughs> so that's all right. I ain't got to say nothing about that. No. <laughs> well, I'm happy and I'm not really no money. Oh, you weren't talking about financial. <laughs> oh, in the crow's nest, we're cautiously optimistic, enjoying it very much, my partner Jilly and myself. Um, Martin's not so happy, not getting a very good price for the pilchards. He's not feeling a very happy man at the moment. He's got the crew, he's got the weather, the boat's working well. The fingers crossed. Well, it, this is like seventh heaven coming down here. It's, it's a real escape and it just gets you out of all the, the fray and all the things that are going on at home. Trying to get the books sorted out and keeping Martin in a jovial mood. And this is really good. <laughs> they are exactly 65, thank oh, you very much. Good. Would you like so, it in a bag? Or are you going to carry it and show it off? I'll show here? it off. You yeah. will. Oh, he bought that for me. Yeah. Thank you, darling. Oh, <laughs> oh, there you go. What do you think? I thought that was Martin's that? boat, and I realised it's the wheelhouse for it. You've got the sonar in, and uh, that's gone great. I just brought her back today. and I've come home to see the fishing news because there's really good write up in the fishing news here of with disappointing results following the eight ton catch martin can well do without the next phone call that has arisen from the article and one of the mishaps i i had before the penrose sunk 
was some scallopers told me gear away and my gear was going to go to the bank seeing I borrowed £20,000 for the Penrose and I got home just now and found a message on the phone from one of the scallopers which were working in the area of where my gear was. It's a bit, a bit distressing. Anyway, have a listen. Now I was not the man that towed that gear away, but I want you to state you've accused a local scalloper. Now that's an accusation that you've got to back up. Now if you've got the proof of it, bloody prove it. Because I'm sick and fed up with the accusations. I was not the man that towed your gear away. Well, that was quite, quite something. This man was in the area and uh, we can't prove that it was him or anybody else. New boots for a new job. As more people leave the fishing industry, it's difficult to get replacement crew. Martin is lucky to have found a young bunch of lads who are willing to try life at sea. He explains to his inexperienced crew the complications and dangers of shooting a large ring net. I thought we'd have any problem with shooting away, but if we're going to have a problem shooting away, we might as well shoot away with the fish in the net and have a problem. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If we wait till coming in a little bit dark between two lights and let them give it a go, at least we've got a chance of catching them, whereas we wouldn't catch them if it's daylight, like now, exactly. too early. Yeah. Right? Don't go! I haven't said shot away yet! Biggest fuck up we've ever seen. And I can't explain why now because it's don't do any good. All hands, come here. Gah. The wire went out too slow. All the net went right over there. The circle wasn't big enough because you made it so short the wire one went out. You've got to get the feel wire going out. I'm in the shit so much I don't know what to do. You're ready to first up. See that guy. When the boat rolls, it goes down a foot like, you know, and yeah. that's when you do it to get it out. Right. Doing a good job, man. Looking all right. Prevail moored up for the night. There's time to reflect and learn from the evening events. Youthful enthusiasm and Martin's eternal optimism combine to lift their spirits as they settle down for the first night aboard. Well, I'd rather do that. Save me spending. Them. Good night, John boy. Good. <laughs>
uh, I had a bit of a problem night before last with the flipping winch, that old winch we were working on. Remember me saying he's a bit underpowered? Bloody calmed down, didn't it? My winch calmed down and, and uh, the net was in the water. We took five hours to get back in. Five hours even in grunting. But anyway, we mended it yesterday and put two brand new motors in it and it was pulling like a demon. But unfortunately, things got from bad to worse and the net went over and came back all right, but the winch had more power and he parted the wire, the brand new wire, and the whole net went to the bottom. And I've been in the Garrens Bay, which is north of Falmouth Bay, uh, for 12 hours now, anchored up to the bottom and, and trying to get somebody to a big boat and somebody to pull me so as I part it in the bottom. So things aren't going all that well. Okay. Like okay, buddy. Just after I phoned, phoned talking to you on the phone, the tide slacked off, and because there's quite a bit of tide, it must have parted out on the rudder, and uh, the net went away because it was wrapped around us. The net actually went away on its own. And I had a big rope, this big rope here, tied on it, and shut it away, give it a bit of stick, and parted it out. It's extremely frustrating. I quite often say that, don't I? I? Get fed up with saying that. But on Sunday, we brought a punt, punt around and moored up in the Garrens Bay, and seeing I had problems last night and the night before, I wasn't able to get it. When I went in to get it just now, <laughs> local man from Port Scatho said, I got your punt with Harbour Master Gotten. He said, the uh, customs and excise was wondering what was happening, the farm of Coast Guards and Carrick District Council. And they all wondering who left the punt there. And they thought it might have been bodies or rum or brandy or drugs or something like that. There's no name on the punt. So I just been in Port Scatho to get the punt back. What a flipping week. Oh, what a year. Well what three years we've been happy. I coming home be home in about four three hours. And I yeah, I ripped my net. Ripped it up, so we have have a bit of sleep. Take it off tomorrow. Alright. Yeah, thanks for phoning man. Love you. Bye. Family, having a nice day on the beach, loads of visitors. It didn't as if we got a mend in it, it's just lacing it up and just tie it there and bring it together. A bit like my shirt, but laced up. Me and Sally have been very worried about the situation as the um, bank said we aren't allowed to use any more checks. Been to the bank again and she's let me have some more money on the overdraft facility so as I can pay some, some of the red bills which some of the people were getting more con more than concerned. They said it's gonna be a gonna be court proceedings the following week, which was last Monday. So last Friday I went to the bank. After four days at sea, supplies running out and no sign of pilchards, ah. Martin looks for an alternative catch, mullet, which swim near the surface during hot weather. Really want to win cover and get your um, backy, don't he? Bloody well, eh? <laughs> I'm glad I don't smoke anymore. Terrible habit getting addicted with that. Yeah, well, it's not that, it's just bugger all to do over and over. Fine. Go to sleep then. <laughs> you sleep. Go to sleep. No, I don't want to sleep, I'm not tired. Well, if you're bored, go and read a book. Got any books have you? No. Nope. Well then. Bye. Be careful. Gone up there. Like young sailors. 
striding through their own little quaint little village of Kovrak, gone in the main store to get some get some more grub for our next journey into the unknown. <laughs> like my t-shirt. Eh? Sally bought it for me. Shot away about 8.30 and we must have got all the fish aboard by about 20 past 12. Uh, 4.30 the following morning. Yeah, 4.30 the following morning and we're still uh, landing. Time too, in it. Handsome, three ton that time. <laughs> Nutty done it. Hopefully, it'll be a lot more to come. Let's have a good price. Should we say fifty pence? I don't want to go any lower than forty pence. Forty pence. If you want to start, forty p. We had a mention on the radio, Cornwall. So that was good. Andrew Munson, who talks on the radio, Cornwall, about what fish being caught in Newlyn, he mentioned that the. Uh, I, th I think he said the only Cornish ringnetter to be working for Pilchers landed some fish this morning, so that was nice. And we got BBC television crew coming out doing some filming, like you do, Jed, on catching them. The promise of wages from the last catch has fired up the team to hunt the Pilchard again, so no time is wasted in returning to sea. At last, just like his ancestors before him, Martin has become the pilcher catcher he had dreamed of. But at what a cost. It's taken three long years, the sinking of Penrose, trips to Ireland and France, but most of all, Martin has caught himself under the burden of huge debts. The high spirits were short-lived. Once again, Martin is knocked back. All his efforts are rewarded with no buyers and rock-bottom prices, as most of this catch will go for a fish meal. Unlike years gone by, today's pilchers are not in great demand, and Martin is forced to wake up to the reality that hard work doesn't always equal profit. Realistically, how long do you think you can carry on like this? Not much longer, really, I don't think, because the bank has asked us to revalue their assets. So time could be very short. So we've got to revalue the house. And they want the, um, the registration of the boat just in case things go worse and uh, 
they take the house and take the boat. I think I'm your biggest asset at the moment. Well, if it weren't for you bailing me <laughs> out the proverbial, I would have mm. gone under financially long ago. Mm. Another bill and Barclay card. How do you think we're going to pay that? Don't know. Come down to me tether. Oh, I can't do no more than what I've done. I went to Croft here today to have a bit of think. My great granddad, who was here for the pilchard industry down the cove, and he wouldn't get beat by the system. If there isn't any markets there to be developed, he'd say, come on boy, pull your finger out. Do it yourself. If they aren't going to buy them, you can catch them. Cook them yourself. I've got a secret recipe. We'll prepare them with Sally, my missus, and Anna, my cousin, my daughter, my daughter's there and they'll be giving me a hand. We'll have a taste in the evening down the cove with a pilchards. That sounds a good idea, doesn't it? Well, good luck, Mark. Well, we need a bit of luck now, don't us? <laughs> yeah. These here pilchards are marinated herself for the last 24 hours and we've got a secret recipe in there and uh, they are all tasting handsome. I hope you enjoy them as well and when you do take a questionnaire away with you and put a little tick in the box appropriately. And, um, if you're going to be sick, there's special little, <laughs> special little boxes in the corner and serviettes. And uh, I hope you enjoy them. What a mug shot. I had an idea as well. Excuse me, Jeff. I said, what a mug shot. Oh, and beautiful, isn't it? I can see how you, how you married how me I, by my how I think you're so looks and wit and humour. <laughs> <laughs> I've even licked my plate. They were that good. Handsome. <laughs> Here, I think you've got that right, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Chris. The past three years have been an emotional roller coaster for me, as well as Martin. It was over a cup of tea that Martin told me of his plans to rediscover the pilchard fishery. I was caught up in his boundless enthusiasm and suggested I followed him with my camera. Little did I know then what I was letting myself in for. At times I've found it very draining and others I've burst my sides with laughing. It's been difficult knowing when to draw this to a close, but I think the right time is now and I wish Martin and Sally success in his latest idea. It's been one hell of an adventure. Yeah. And, uh, I just hope things work out for you in the future. Um, what was your thoughts on our, on the tasting session? Pretty darn good, yeah. We've had well over 100 people here, and uh, these questionnaires have been filled out handsomely. The uh, middle one here is, is the three little boxes. It's handsome, not bad, or horrible. And most of them are handsome. I reckon we cracked it, Jay. I reckon this is answer. Instead of catching them in bulk, and middleman kept getting so much money, like one buyer said on the tele the other day, if a fisherman don't like it, you can set up shop yourself. So I think we're gonna just set up shop with our team we got here. Because um, nobody was sick. <laughs> and uh, let's hope things are gonna be right. So <laughs> uh, no, thanks for filming me and uh, giving me the opportunity to do something like this, Jed. <laughs> right, cheers old buddy. All the best, Mark. Right on, Jen.